Whenever we mention Mongolia, Genghis Khan comes to mind. Once, the Mongols, who had spread over a quarter of the world, were the largest land empire with contiguous borders. Emerging as a result of the conquests of Genghis Khan and his successors in the 13th century, it was a state covering the largest conquered territories in world history, from Eastern Europe to the Sea of Japan, from Western Russia to Southeast Asia. The vastness of the empire bridged the West and the East, making trade safe along the silk and spice routes. The Mongols held the control of the world. However, the fame didn't last forever as the empire, too vast to manage, fragmented into numerous smaller entities. Today, the Mongols, descendants of this entire empire, serve as a buffer zone created to prevent conflict between Russia and China. How did a buffer country emerge between two powers from an empire that couldn't fit into 35 million square kilometers? In this section, I will tell you everything about Mongolia. For years, Mongolia, quietly living and hardly ever making headlines in the world press, broke its silence. In Mongolia, the people stormed the state palace. In the capital, thousands of people braved freezing temperatures to protest against corruption allegations in the country's coal industry and rising inflation. The majority of the protesters, composed of young people, demanded justice against corrupt officials in 21-degree cold and called for the resignation of the country's parliament. Some shepherds also went to the cities to join the protests. People are suffering incredibly economically. No, we cannot speak of just ordinary government corruption when it comes to Mongolia. Because here, control isn't even in the hands of the government. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which led to a 15.2% increase in inflation and closed borders affecting trade with China, Mongolia's economy worsened even further. But that's not all. Mongolia sends 86% of its exports to China. More than half of its exports consist of coal. A quarter of the country's gross domestic product comes from mining. In this context, in the capital city of Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, $13 billion worth of coal, which the government was supposed to supply to China, disappeared. Right after this incident, riots broke out. Let's delve into the main question. How did the descendants of Genghis Khan, who once struck fear into the world, come to see these days? To understand this question, let's look at the gradual collapse of the Mongol Empire. Because the empire occupied such a vast area, it was easy for the Khan living at the eastern end of the empire to overlook what was happening at the western end. Intense competition for the throne was compounded by logistical obstacles. And as self-proclaimed Khans emerged in various parts of the empire, the competition within the Mongol Khans intensified. While Mongol Khans were busy fighting among themselves, another nomadic tribe called the Manchus was gaining power in the east of Mongolia and northeast China. By the mid-17th century, the Manchus, a nomadic people from northeastern China, had grown stronger and officially took over the Khanates of Mongolia. In 1755, all the Khanates of the Mongols came under Manchu rule. In 1906, the Manchu Empire expanded its policy of imposing Chinese culture from Inner Mongolia to Outer Mongolia. By encouraging Chinese men to settle in Mongol territories and marry Mongol women, they hoped to impose the Chinese way of life and culture on the Mongols. This policy increased resistance among the Mongols against Manchu rule, and when the Manchu dynasty collapsed in China, Mongol Khans and the people declared their independence from the Manchus, and therefore from the Chinese, in 1911. However, China and Russia did not recognize Mongolia's independence, and in 1915, they reduced Mongolia to an autonomous status under Chinese sovereignty. This meant that Mongolia had the right to determine not only its foreign affairs but also its domestic affairs, including international trade relations. In short, Mongolia was turned into a buffer state between China and Russia. Following this agreement, the Russian Empire collapsed and the communists came to power. Concerned about this new development, China sent its top generals to direct all foreign forces in Mongolia. Alliances against the Chinese began to form within Mongolia. It was almost like a war of liberation. To organize the Liberation Army and provide it with ammunition, they even sent a small delegation to Russia to seek help from the communist Russians. Starting from February 1921, communist-backed Mongol rebels began fighting against the Chinese. By summer, so many Mongols had joined the rebels that the Chinese were driven out of Mongolia and forcibly expelled. On July 11, 1921, Mongolia once again declared its independence. China, once again, refused to recognize Mongolia as an independent nation. Thus, Mongolia turned its face towards the Soviet Union once more. With the support of the Bolsheviks in the USSR, Mongolia declared itself an independent nation in 1921. It was established as a communist people's republic that would listen to Moscow. With the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1990, Mongolia adopted a multi-party government and embraced a market economy. 
On the other hand, the Mongolian region, stretching to the Gobi Desert, home to some of the world's most famous oil fields, remained part of China. This area, known as Inner Mongolia, extends from the grasslands near the Russian border in the northeast to vast oil reserves in the west. Currently, this region, which we call Inner Mongolia, is falling victim to China's assimilation efforts. The majority population in major cities consists of Han Chinese, while ethnic Mongols are more prevalent in rural areas. One of the most common questions we encounter is this. Is Inner Mongolia the same as Mongolia? Not exactly. Inner Mongolia is part of China. It has a population of approximately 25 million people and covers an area of 1 by 118 million square kilometers. Compare this to Mongolia with a population of around 3.2 million people and an area of 1.566 million square kilometers. Why is it called Inner Mongolia? During the 19th century, when the Manchu dynasty controlled China, they divided the Mongol population into two provinces, Inner and Outer Mongolia. The inner part was designated for the descendants of Genghis Khan, who were given the title of Han within the province. The former Outer Mongolia was where other Mongols lived, so these distinctions were created by China to divide Mongolia. It shares the Gobi Desert on its southern border with China. Inner Mongolia, which is part of China, is home to approximately 6 million ethnic Mongols, twice the population of independent Mongolia. China, the world's second largest economy, consumes about 90% of Mongolia's exports, including coal, copper, and other ores, raw and refined cashmere, and provides more than a third of Mongolia's imports. China is also the country's largest source of investment. The Russian government, on the other hand, holds a 51% stake in the Mongolian railway, hindering the development of a more efficient railway transportation network. Moscow tightly controls the economy by supplying 90% of Mongolia's energy. This influence extends to other areas as well. Mongolia must contend with significant structural challenges. Not only does it have a population of just 3 million, but it also occupies a very challenging geography as a landlocked country with no access to the sea. All goods entering or leaving Mongolia must pass through the territories and airspace of its more populous and powerful neighbors, Russia and China. Mongolia's main railway network, the Trans-Mongolian Railway, is single track and extends approximately 700 miles from the Russian border in the north to the Chinese border in the south. Thus, Mongolia continues to serve as a buffer zone between these two countries. The main reason Stalin supported Mongolia's independence without annexing it to Soviet territory was to avoid the Soviet Union entering into conflict with China. However, Mongolia identifies the United States as its third most important neighbor and benefits from its relationship with Washington to shape events on a global scale. As a uranium-rich country, Mongolia plays an active role in preventing the spread of nuclear weapons and resolving disputes in Northeast Asia. I'm Nazgul Kenjate. Stay tuned. Let's explore the world together. Whenever we mention Mongolia, Genghis Khan comes to mind. Once, the Mongols, who had spread over a quarter of the world, were the largest land empire with contiguous borders.